We have seen some introduction about recurrent neural networks in that we have seen forward propagation and backward propagation through time. RNNs are able to connect previous information to present information. For example, if we take movie, previous video frames might inform the understanding of the present time. If RNN could do this, they would be extremely helpful. But can they really do that? It depends. Sometimes we only need to look at recent information to perform present tasks. For example, if we are trying to predict the last word in this sentence, I used to live in France and I learned how to speak. We need to predict this word here. We can predict the language as French based on previous reference of France. RNN can remember previous context by maintaining the state of the network. In this case, gap between relevant information, France, and the place that it needs is small. This reference is needed here. This gap is small. In this case, RNN will be able to handle it because it has short term dependencies. Let's take another example. Try to predict the last word in this sentence. I grew up in France and also we have some more information than I speak fluent. RNN need to predict the next word. Here this recent information I speak fluent suggests that next word is probably the name of language. But if you want to narrow down which language then we need the context of this France. In theory, RNNs are absolutely capable of handling such long term dependencies. But in practice, RNNs cannot able to learn this kind of long term dependencies. RNNs are hard to train sequences of quite long, perhaps 20 words or more. To train them properly, we need to back propagate through many layers. Suppose this France comes at time step 1, the word we need to predict at time step 21. So we need to back propagate up to 20 time steps. There are two widely known issues with properly training RNNs with longer sequences by using back propagation through time, the vanishing and exploding gradient problems. In practice, many people truncate the back propagation to a few steps. Let's see why it is hard to train RNNs with longer sequences. For example, RNN compute single output y hat the state of the network at time step t is given by ht equal to some nonlinear activation function such as sigmoid of ut xt plus w ht minus 1 plus bias here y hat is the softmax of ht times weight matrix v suppose if you are doing something problem like uh, sentiment classification if this simple recurrent neural network unrolled for four time steps this would be something like this we need to adjust the parameters of the model u, v and w. For this we need to calculate the gradients with respect to parameters v, w and u means we need to take the derivatives of the loss function with respect to each of these parameters. In previous class we have already seen how to calculate these gradients but here there is a small change here loss is at the final time step but in previous class we have used different model where the loss at each time step. Here we have model like this so we have losses at each time steps every time it, this network is giving output but here we are using different network so partial derivative of last function with respect to w will be this one loss l depends on predicted value y hat y hat depends on hidden state this hidden state depends on this w so first we need to take the partial derivative of last function with respect to y hat then partial derivative of y hat with respect to ht partial derivative of ht with respect to W. Let us concentrate on this last term. Suppose if we have four time steps, the partial derivative with respect to W will be this one. This is the summation of all of these terms. Same thing can be written like this. We have seen this gradient calculation in previous class. For more details, you can refer previous class video. If this t equal to 4 and k equal to 1, then this term would be dou h4 by dou h1. Partial derivative of h4 with respect to h1 is product of these terms because hidden state at time step 4 depends on hidden state at time step 3. This hidden state at time step 3 depends on hidden state at time step 2. It will continue like that. Means hidden state at particular time step depends on hidden state of its previous time step. So we can express the same thing as product of all terms from i equal to k plus 1 to t do hi by do hi minus 1. If we have very long sequence means we have very big value for this t then this product will be very longer if it is long what will be the problem we 
already know hidden state at time step is a function of previous hidden state multiplied with its weight matrix w let's assume this entire expression as z then this term dou hi by dou hi minus 1 can be written as this chain rule this dou hi by dou zi will be diagonal matrix and here we are taking partial derivative of this zi with respect to hi minus 1 so this term will 0 and this term will become 0 here derivative would be w so the jacobian dou hi by dou hi minus 1 will be this one the norm of this jacobian is bounded by the product of norms of these two matrices suppose if activation is sigmoid its derivative value will be between 0.20 to 0.25 if activation is tan h its derivative is between 0.42 to 1 sigmoid upper bound is 0.25 so it can be written as 1 by 4 tan h upper bound is 1 and let us call this upper bound as gamma and this weight matrix is also bounded let's call this magnitude as lambda so this norm value is less than or equal to lambda into gamma we know this term is product of such terms so we can write like this this product has t minus k terms if this product of lambda and gamma is less than 1 then this term will have value very close to 0 so gradient will vanish if this product lambda and gamma greater than 1 then this term values grow exponentially so gradient will explode to avoid this kind of vanishing and exploding gradients problem many people use truncated back propagation through time means this back propagation will not be done through all of these time steps only it will be stopped after some time steps by using truncated back propagation through time we can avoid vanishing and exploding gradient problem but we cannot capture long term dependencies if we want to capture long term dependencies we need to try in this RNN till this end but if we do so there will be a problem of vanishing and exploding gradients to model long term dependencies we have special RNN architectures LSTMs and GRUs gated or recurrent units we will see them in next class